Hello, everybody. Um, thanks for being here. Um, I'll just get right to it. Um, um, I, let me do a. I'll I'll do a quick little introduction when they come up. This is this is this is uh, Pete Kozak and Cassandra Robertson. I'm Ralph Penanuri, and uh, I'll do a little bit of uh, comment or two before they begin. But uh, let me get started here. Um, a fellow by the name of Dave Carter said he woke up one morning clear as a bell and wrote this uh, song in about 15-20 minutes. And uh, the Unitarians have adopted it for their songbook and uh, it's called Gentle Arms of Eden. You've got it there. Uh, you can read the lyrics or you can just listen and take it in viscerally. ocean when the world lay in a dream there was rhythm in the splash and roll not a voice to sing the moon fell on the breakers morning warmed the waves till a single cell did hum and jump for joy just for to say this is my home this is my only home the only sacred ground I have Heaven knows, should I stray in the dark night alone? Rock me, goddess, in the gentle arms of Eden. Then the day shone bright and rounder, and the one turned into two, and the two into ten thousand things, and old things into new. On some virgin beachhead, a lonesome critter crawled. About and he shouted out in his most astonished drawl, This is my home, this is my only home, the only sacred ground I have. Heaven knows, should I stray in the dark night alone? Run me, goddess, in the gentle arms of Eden. Yeah, then all the sky was buzzing. And the ground was carpet green And the wary children of the woods went dancing in between People sang rejoicing and the fields were glad with grain This song of celebration from their cities on the plain This is my home, this is my only home The only sacred ground I have ever known Just the capo. Now there's smoke across the harbor. There's factories on the shore. And the world is ill with greed and will and enterprise of war. But I lay my burdens in the cradle of your grace. On the shining beaches of your love. Seas of your embrace. This is my home, this is my only home, the only sacred ground I have ever known should I stray in the dark night alone, rock me goddess in the gentle arms of Eden, rock me goddess in the gentle arms of Eden. That song uh, echoes uh, a lot of creation stories, creation myths, uh, and uh, if you have a Christian orientation, 
Uh, it's a lot like uh, Genesis uh, in, 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 the, in the Bible where uh, from nothing comes one thing and then everything in the universe comes in. Anyway, um, I'm going to do another song by Richard Farina, who passed away a long time ago. Uh, was married to Joan Baez's sister. I don't know if that means anything to anyone. They, had, they were a great duo. He wrote this song called The Falcon. It's kind of based on an old folk song, but uh, he took it other places. So... is Pete Kozak, who is, uh, you are, you are a real ethnomusicologist, certified and all that? No, no, uh, no, I, uh, 
I wish I were. <laughs> but I have an abiding interest, and in, uh, uh, I'm, I'm an amateur uh, in that regard, but, uh, but a serious amateur, so very, very serious. Uh, actually, I have been um, grew up in a, a very musical household. My mom was a music professor back at the University of Nebraska, and uh, so I grew up with all kinds of music in the house. Uh, back in the... Um, Late 60s, early 70s, I got my first guitar and uh, was gravitated towards the, some of the popular music of the time, which was um, Bob Dylan and some of the some of the folk music uh, that that um, that influenced him, uh, including this next uh, songwriter, Woody Guthrie. Uh, Woody Guthrie uh, was probably best known for one of the songs we're going to do later, "This Land Is Your Land," but wrote a lot of great songs. Uh, wrote about his. Um, his upbringing and his life uh, out of Oklahoma and um, depression, despot era. And so this is a song that he wrote. Uh, it's about uh, a notorious outlaw of his day, Pretty Boy Floyd. Uh, but and Woody Guthrie's um, take on Pretty Boy Floyd may, may or may not be historically accurate, but uh, he does have a point he wants to get across. And um, anyway, I'll let the song speak for itself. So here's one called Pretty Boy Floyd. If you gather around me, children, story I will tell about Pretty Boy Floyd now, love. Oklahoma knew him well. It was in the town of Shawnee, it was a Saturday afternoon. His wife beside him in the wagon. As in a town their own Then the new sheriff approached him In a manner rather rude Using vulgar words of play And his wife she overheard Now pretty boy grabbed his log chain The deputy grabbed his gun and man in the fight that followed He laid that deputy down then he took to the trees and timber to live a life of shame. Every crime in Oklahoma was added to his name. There's many a starving farmer, it's the same old story told. How an outlaw paid their mortgage and saved their little home. Others will tell you of a stranger and came to beg a meal. And underneath a napkin Left a thousand dollar bill It was in Oklahoma City It was on a Christmas day Here come a whole carload of groceries Come with a note to say Well, you say that I'm an outlaw You say that I'm a thief But now here's a Christmas dinner For the families on me You'll see lots of funny men Some will rob you with a six gun And some with a fountain pen And it's in this world you'll travel And it's in this world you'll grow Well, you won't never see an outlaw Drop a family from their own And as I look at the, the words that were printed off, I notice uh, um, slight differences in the version that I sing. Uh, and that is not uncommon for a lot of these old folk songs. Uh, it's quite possible that Woody Guthrie never sang it the same way twice. Uh, different <laughs> recordings, if you listen uh, throughout his recorded history, you'll hear him do, um, make slight changes to his songs. So the version I learned uh, was from a Woody Guthrie record. Like, most of the songs I learned uh, off of the records from the old, back in the old days when there is when vinyl was king. And uh, but there are there are variations, and that's part of the folk process. So, uh, well, this next song I'm going to do is one from a, a great uh, um, songwriter named John Prine. Uh, John Prine is out of Chicago. Um, he was. Uh, Probably by the time he was your age, he was already well established as a songwriter. He was a, a rather precocious songwriter, wrote a lot of great songs, uh, and I hope that uh, 
if nothing else, the song that I sing here uh, piques your interest in uh, more John Prine uh, songs for you. This one is called Paradise, and uh, it's a song about, uh, well, again, it'll speak for itself, but it, it, there's an environmental message here. Um, I, I just want to say, this, this song has a great chorus, so if you want to join in, please do. Okay. Abs absolutely. Yeah, that should go without saying any of these songs. If you feel like you want to join in, please do. Um, and this song has a little uh, particular resonance with me on my dad's side. Uh, my grandfather was actually a coal miner back in the anthracite fields in Pennsylvania briefly in his uh, youth. Uh, he didn't stay a coal miner for very long, uh, fortunately. Um, anyway, one called Paradise. When I was a child, my family would travel down to western Kentucky where my parents were born. There's a backwards old town that's often remembered and so many times that my memory is old. And daddy won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County down by the Green River where paradise lay. Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late to pass him. Mr. Peabody's coal train has hauled it away. Now, sometimes we travel on down the Green River, the abandoned old prison down by Averill Hill, where the air smells like snakes and we shoot with our pistols. But an empty pot bottle is all. Take me back to Muhlenberg County, down by the Green River where paradise lays. Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late past him. Mr. Peabody's coat train is all it away. Then the coal company came with the world's largest shovel. Tortured the timber and they stripped all the land And they dug for their gold till the land was forsaken And they wrote it all down as the progress of man And daddy won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County Down by the Green River where paradise lay Well I'm sorry my son but it's too late past me Mr. Peabody's coat train is holding away. When I die, let my ashes flow down the Green River. Let my soul on up to the Rochester Dam. Well, I'll be halfway to heaven with paradise waiting. Just a five miles away from wherever I am. Won't you take me back to Muhlenberg County Down by the Green River where paradise lay Well, I'm sorry, my son, but you're too late asking Mr. Peabody's coal train has hauled it away Yeah, Mr. Peabody's coal train has hauled it away Cassandra is an amazing songwriter. If you've glanced at the lyrics she's done, uh, uh, I mean, she's right up there with, uh, I'd say, with like Holly Near, Libby Roderick, Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys reminds me a bit of you, gotta say. Um, anyway, uh, let her speak or sing for herself. This is Cassandra. That last song is such a beautiful song. All these artists that they're bringing forward are definitely heroes of mine who just speak about what's going on. And um, we're living in big times where a lot of stuff's changing. It doesn't really seem super great for really anyone. So it's nice to be able to do something with the energy or the feelings that we're having. So I um, I put it into music. It just kind of settles my soul. And the music that I write has positive message. So if you get stuck in your head. 
you're still you're going to start feeling good and feeling better. And as we feel better, we hopefully make a better world for others and ourselves. So this song um, is a two-part song because I wrote it eight years ago when uh, Obama was elected. I wrote it about the next day uh, after that election, the feelings I was having, and then chorus just didn't work for me anymore after about a month and uh, so I tucked this song away and this last summer it just came out um, kind of came out somehow I found it or it was on a piece of paper and I started singing again kind of played it differently changed the chorus or omitted the chorus altogether and then after the current election uh, the last couple lyrics came in and uh, it's just been really fun to play and sing this song and hope it makes you feel really good by the end there This new turn in events and we go forward now to men. We go forward now. We go forward now. And the tears they have been released. Cleanse the past history. of the unborn, all the tender steps, all those tender steps, and to all the people who have never seen someone like themselves in the league. singer a little bit of my history uh, was in choirs and I love music I feel like music just heals the soul all kinds of music there's something about it just comes in and, and I really like uh, topical songs and with words that mean a little more than love songs for me feeds me more and uh, um, my dad came out on my 21st birthday and handed me his applause it was a plastic back 
a hundred dollar guitar and I'm like, what do I do with that? Never played an instrument, I only sang. So I started from real scratch, learned how to play the guitar 20 years ago. It took me a while to even play a few chords, but I started writing right away. That came the most natural, way more natural than playing this instrument. <laughs> um, so you can just really start at any time. That's what I really love about a lot of these greats. You know, they started when they were six and ten. And it was like, oh, well, I'll never catch up. Um, the woman who's playing bass with me right now is a beautiful friend of mine. And she uh, has been playing music, but she just picked up the bass six years ago. And now we're touring together. So it's just, music is just such a healing force. Um, so I just want to play the title track to my, uh, my most recent album. Uh, and this kind of has the theme of that... Uh, Fifth, fourth verse there about being, being. The song's called "Be Yourself," and it's all true stories. It's three different stories that come together, and this song really wrote itself when people just were telling me these stories. And um, yeah, you can listen to any of this music on my website for free. So if you want to hear this song again, you can go to CassandraRobertson.com to listen. Can they get your stuff? When we have a chance, why don't each of you tell us where we can get your stuff? Right. And I can also put it on there in the canvas site. That'd be great. Yeah. Mina, may I have a program? Oh. I want to see the lyrics as they're going by. All right. Yeah, this is a good one. Thank you. Uh, I've got a few, uh, <laughs> a few songs here just back. Yeah, this is great. Well, I'll take one too, please. Okay. Here we go. Forgot 
who she used to be and how to let that little child get free. Be yourself, be yourself, not anybody else except yourself. Not a very musical house, and uh, just had to be myself. Um, <laughs> was uh, was lucky enough to live near Manhattan, and would go into the uh, they in, in Greenwich Village, at Washington Square back in the '60s. They had these great jams. They were just immense, mm -hmm. little groups everywhere, and. Um, uh, that's where that's where I learned to play. I, I had uh, a few years a few years ago. I had six weeks of uh, some music theory one summer, but that's my only um, musical training, so to speak. Uh, I've always been a um, learned like a bird on the wire. I'd go to these jams, and and bluegrass people would show up and and folk singers and and uh, and you just see what the guy next to you is doing and you just start doing it like a bird on the wire and uh, uh, grew up in a working class home and uh, got out of a depressed mill town got a bunch of scholarships went to art school uh, and uh, when I couldn't get work, started busking in the street. Uh, came out to the West Coast. Um, had a musical career years ago, and I'm supposed to be retired now. Uh, and I'm <laughs> I spent 30 some years uh, in publishing and, and marketing. And uh, now that I'm retired, so to speak, I'm using my new tires for uh, for gardening. Uh, I'm on a half acre in music and. Uh, Getting back to writing, this song is about, it's called uh, A Mind of Its Own, and uh, it's, it's about uh, the people that are working hard trying to get by, and uh, it goes something like this. My darling and me, we were working for a place and a family, and we did what we could for a place called home. The times had a way all their own. Now it's a hard scrabble life in the land of the free, and you give yourself to the In a war comfort zone, the truth has a way all its own. Yeah, there's a high and low and wild and free over the mountains and the rolling sea. Sometimes at night, old oh, dreams come on. Heart has a mind of its own. Steals my life, but it's better than most. And the kids look away like I'm some kind of ghost. We're in this together, not quite alone. And each life has a path all its own. Yeah, there's a Sometimes at night, old dreams 
come home The heart has a mind of its own Get hard for a family when they're shutting down farms and factories. But there's more to this life. The feelings been growing here in the great unknown. Yeah, and there's a high wind blowing wild and free over the mountains and the Times at night, old dreams come home. The heart has a mind of its own. Yeah, the heart has a mind of its own. starting up and uh, Kuwait was uh, drilling for oil on the Iraq border and drilling at an angle into uh, uh, Iraq's land and I thought wow they're just they're just wanting to they, they just want Iraq to, to start you know start fighting they just want to start a war and uh, it was it was November, or December. I was out in the yard clearing brush, and it was kind of it was a gray day, one of these gray Oregon days. And this lone bird come flying by, and I was just thinking about, oh no, more war, you know, with all the environmental damage, and what are we handing on to our kids and the next generations, and why do they keep doing this? And uh, this bird comes by, and I thought, wow, it's, and it was calling, this plaintive, just, ah, ah. and I thought, wow, what happens when species die off? And I've been noticing a lot of the little birds aren't around anymore. We used to, our feeders, they're not coming. Uh, so I thought, you know, when extinction happens, what happens to the last ones? Are they calling for the rest? So, um, I wrote this song at that point. It's called Turning Tide. And each wave of the turning tide comes and, and uh, I confess I was, uh, I was quite involved in the Bernie campaign because he was the only honest one out there. Um, and now we'll, we'll, we'll see as I get older. I keep saying, we'll see, because uh, you know, predictions. But anyway, it's called Turning Tide, and it goes something like this. Lone bird crossing a winter sky, unanswered, fading in the night. Gonna start over because I got the wrong heart, and a heart, good heart is good for this. Gonna start it over. Now you know what the beginning goes like. And, uh, you're welcome to join in on the ends of the verses with turning of the tide. Just those, those four words. Lone bird crossing a winter sky, unanswered, fading in the night. Where are the others, sisters and brothers, memories I love? When nobody knows you Hearts are closed, hands are tied There is refuge in place called home For the turning of the tide Refugees on the road tonight They planned us, wars won't make us whole 
again Now if I could go where I wanted I'd search far deep and wide Touch the hearts of everyone With the turning of the tide All right. Mindless deceptions, consumer addictions, captive, blinded by the lies. Never asking the cost of old lessons lost, where once understanding was bright and green. Now half blind, wide eyed, and weary, learning to take it in stride. This so Again, in the change in the eyes of a friend. Tears of pain, tears of rage, tears of hope. Turn the page, who knows how and when. Let that river of time keep on rolling. Take all the tears that need to cry. Let it roll through our hearts and make us a part. For the turning of the tide Let it roll through our hearts And make us part of the turning of the tide There's a bird crossing the winter sky Oh yeah, Spider that Man. picture. That was that's from the uh, the the pipeline, uh, the uh, uh, Dakota pipeline, and uh, yeah, these pictures, by the way, yeah, that that's that's some uh, some sprouts coming up through pavement, which is uh, part of resistance uh, with Gentle Arms of Eden, that's a tree of life, an old tree of life uh, illustration. Uh, those are Dust Bowl refugees, a mom fiddling and her son on mandolin, they're living in a tent. Uh, Dust Bowl refugees, a lotus for Be Yourself, Cassandra's song. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's, that's the uh, Dakota Pipeline resistance. Uh, and uh, Standing Rock. Standing Rock. Thank you. Yes, Standing Rock. And then uh, that's uh, that's Dylan. Uh, Pete's going to sing Subterranean Homesick Blues. That's Dylan in, at the '65 Newport Folk Festival when he first came out. Electric. I was there. I saw that. Uh, and then this this amazing picture is in the uh, when all these black kids and, uh, and not just kids black folks were getting killed, you know, for all kind. I don't know if you saw any of the videos. Anyway, this was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, protesting on uh, police brutality. This woman just standing up to these guys with all their gear. Um, anyway, and then uh, Picasso with uh, Herman as well. That's, that's a famous P Picasso illustration, the peace dove and a woman. And then then uh, the great, great American Truths flag. The great American Truths are uh, s sustaining and self-evident. What can I say? So, anyway, it's Pete's turn. <laughs> well, I'd like to do a song from um, uh, a Texas songwriter who just passed away, I believe last year, a guy by the name of Guy Clark. Oh, yeah. uh, and uh, co-written by Roger Allen Murrow. Uh, Guy Clark was out of the, the school of uh, 
Texas songwriters that have given us uh, Towns Van Zant and Steve Earle. Uh, Towns Van Zant passed away a number of years ago, but Steve Earle, one of uh, one of his disciples, uh, great songwriter. I'll be doing a, a song of his in a little bit, but uh, but Guy Clark. Uh, you may not know the name Guy Clark, but he wrote for a lot of uh, great. Singers uh, wrote uh, a couple of hits for Jerry Jeff Walker and others. Um, anyway, this next one is called Immigrant Eyes. Um, I was just in New York last month uh, and had a chance. I uh, was down at Battery Park and looked out at the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. And uh, you know, most of us, with the the exception of maybe you know indigenous folks that might be in this room, are from somewhere else or or uh, have parents or grandparents or great-grandparents uh, from somewhere else, and this is kind of the story. This was written as a homage to, to uh, his grandfather, but I think uh, in light of what's going on with uh, the bashing of uh, immigrants and uh, travel restrictions and bans on people entering this country, I think it's uh, it's kind of poignant. Uh, mm -hmm. takes on a new meaning, at least it, it did with me. When I, when I thought of this song as I was looking at the Statue of Liberty from Battery Park, and, uh, Anyway, one called uh, Immigrant Eyes. Oh, well, the silent was swarming Like a scene from a costume ball Deck out in the corners of Europe And on fire with the hope of it all There my father's old father stood huddled With a tire Hungry and scared, turn of the century pilgrims, bound by the dream that they shared. They were standing in line just like cattle, both men prodded and shoved. Some were one desk away from sweet freedom, some were torn from someone they loved. Through this sprawling tower of Babel Came a young man, confused and alone Determined and bound for America And carrying everything that he owned Sometimes when I look at my grandfather's immigrant eye I see that day reflected I can't hold my feelings inside I see starting with nothing, working hard all of his life. So don't take it for granted, see grandfather's immigrant eye. Now he rocks and stares out the window, but his eyes still just as clear as the day he sailed through the harbor came ashore on the island of tears all oh, my grandfather's days are numbered but I won't let his memory die cause he gave me the gift of this country and the look in his immigrant eyes Sometimes when I look at my grandfather's immigrant eye, I see that day reflected and I can't hold my feelings inside. I see starting with nothing, working hard all of his life. So don't take it for granted, see grandfather's immigrant eye. So don't take it for granted, see grandfather's immigrant eye. song I'm going to do is a Bob Dylan tune. Uh, and you're pulling out the heavy artillery. Yeah, I'm bringing out the banjo. Uh, this is not the instrument that Bob Dylan uh, originally <laughs> did this with, but I thought uh, I play a little banjo. I thought it might be kind of fun to put this one to banjo, um, sort of an experiment, and uh, well, we'll just kind of see how it goes. But um, 
Before there was rap music, there was subterranean homesick blues. Uh, and at first glance, when first listen, this might seem almost uh, a bunch of non sequiturs thrown together that happen to rhyme. But, uh, but you would be wrong, I think, to, to come away with that. Uh, the more I, I sing this song, the more I study this song, I realize that there's a lot of social commentary uh, in this song. And I guess that's up to you to figure out what that what it all means. But uh, it does mean something. It's not. Uh, a lot of people don't realize how much of a sense of humor uh, Bob Dylan has when he writes. A lot of his songs are, I, I think, devastatingly funny and clever. This is one I've always loved called uh, Subterranean Homesick Blues. Well, Johnny's in the basement mixing up the medicine. I'm on the pavement. Think about the government. The man in the trench coat badge out laid off. Said he's got a bad car. Wants to get it paid off. Look out, kid. Something you did well. God knows when, but you're doing it again. You better duck down the alleyway looking for a new friend. A man in a coonskin cap and pig pen wants $11 bills and you only got them. Comes fleet foot, face full of black soot, talking that the heat put plants in the bed, but the phone's tapped anyway. Maggie says that many said they must bust an early way orders from the DA. Look out, kid. No matter what you did, wet and walk on your tiptoes. Don't try no dope. Better stay away from those. Get around a fire hose. Keep a clean nose. Watch plain clothes. You don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. Get sick, get well, hang around an inkwell, hang bell, hard to tell, everything is gonna sell. I'll try hard, get barred, get back, rat rail, get jail, jump bail, join the army if you fail, look out, kid. Don't get hit, but losers, cheaters, six time users, hang around the theaters, girl by the whirlpool, looking for a new fool, don't follow leaders, watch a parking meter. Oh, get born, keep born, short pants, romance, learn to dance, get dressed, get blessed, try to be a success pleaser, please him, buy gifts, don't steal, don't lift, 20 years of school, and they put you on the day shift, look out, kid, to keep it all ahead, better jump down a manhole, light yourself a candle, don't wear sandals, try to avoid the scandal, don't want to be a bum, you better chew bomb, but that won't work, cause the vandals put the handle By the way, this the line, um, you don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. Uh, that was the inspiration, uh, for good or for ill, for the, um, the group The Weathermen, uh, which was a, a radical group back in the 60s and 70s. Um, the 60s, actually. Uh, Anti-war group. So Bob Dylan inspired a lot of people. Well, I'm going to try to play this banjo, too. Uh, this next song I wrote on the banjo, but I, they're so darn heavy, and I just literally do not want to carry one around. <laughs> so I always play it on the guitar, but since we have a banjo here, it's kind of nice to get to play. Watching us standing rock and just from afar, we sent money, sent stuff, sent people, supported people, sent solar panels. We didn't go there, me and my family, but it felt like um, a pretty massive movement in our country for kind of the first time where a lot of different people came together to, to do something that's right. Um, and it got met with really extreme measures and really disrespectful of the elderly, of disabled people, of children. It was just like, what are we doing? And it was televised so everyone could see it. Um, so a lot of the music I'm writing this year, this is a new song, is to get us up off our butts and get out and help each other because it's up to us and this is what we got and it's good because we got a lot of it, a lot of people and um, so this song is called Look Forward. Stand up, wake up, put to practice 
all we know. Time to rise up, wise up, devise a new plan. Away go. Victims, captain servants to the practice that we keep. We are not locked in no change, stay the same every moment. We are free. We are free. And we are all connected, each one of us. We are one family. And there is no time in between, so much more than we can. So let's rise to the occasion, will you join me? Look forward, advance, prospect. Do we want to go from here? And from our mistakes, I break heartache, I create my own mirror. written in uh, about 10 years ago and the politics uh, just make me feel left out sometimes so I wrote this song and kind of come to terms with it
much. Um, I'd like to um, open it up to a little bit of discussion or questions or whatever, and want to start by by saying that um, the uh, there's I I feel so privileged and honored, and it's precious to be able to to share organic homegrown music and not be plugged into the media not be a commodity you know listening to whatever Lottie Dawes going on um, David Crosby of the, the group uh, Crosby Stills Nash back in the day um, said that uh, songwriters and folk singers are like the town criers of the modern world we're there to say it's 12 o'clock and every, every, all is well or all is not well. And the, the major media is not letting us know <laughs> stuff these days. We are, you know, we're very well controlled. Uh, it's a very glitzy, glamorous control for those of us that, that are privileged enough, you know. Um, and Anyway, it's it's just um, I don't know where to go with it. I'm I'm a little little overwhelmed with the thoughts, but uh, I, I I I'm so grateful to be here with these guys and and do what they do. And I don't know if any of y'all are uh, um, what can uh, what concerns you have. I have a daughter who's 29 years old. She's uh, uh, got a, got a fast track career going on and uh, doing well, but I I get worried about things like uh, they don't tell you how Fukushima radiation keep, just keeps growing. Not only is it the slow death of the Pacific Ocean, but it's it's it, it's growing and it's working its way over the Rockies and into Middle America, and the radiation counts are up, and the governments keep upping, they say, acceptable levels. Um, and uh, like I said, uh, I, I see the, the little birds and the little critters dying off little by little, more and more, and, and it gets, the little stuff dies off first, and then it gets to us. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really concerned about the coming generations. I've been, I've been at it since I heard Rachel Carson speak when I was a teen in 65 and I haven't looked back um, and uh, I just uh, you know I don't know if uh, I'm hoping that that you know democracy is a constant struggle and uh, anyway I'll, I'll stop I'll, I'll get off my <laughs> old man rant but uh, I, I truly uh, am concerned about the coming generations and, and the planet, and uh, and uh, that's why I'm here, and that uh, and and that's that's why I write a lot of this music. Although you got to have a sense of humor at some point, or you just uh, you just dig a big hole for yourself, you know. It's uh, don't let the bad stuff drag you down. But uh, anyway. Glad to be here. I don't know. Do you, do you guys have anything to say or any commentary or I, I kind of? Well, said. we're looking out to you guys to to fix the mess that we made and our generation made. So uh, <clears throat> not uh, putting any pressure on you. Uh, my daughter right now is uh, studying for the bar exam in New York. She just graduated from law school, and I told her many years ago, uh, sweetie, uh, you're going to have to fix our mess. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, that's just kind of the way it is. And uh, at her law school graduation, the, uh, the keynote speaker and every speaker, in fact, they're pretty much said the same thing. Uh, this is a call to arms. Uh, and regardless of your political beliefs or or your uh, uh, political affiliations, uh, you know, please, please get involved. Uh, vote. Uh, the, what, what I find astonishing is that in this country, we have such lower, uh, such low voter turnout. And you know, one can say, you know, it, arguably, it's uh, people stay home because they don't like the choices that we have. But. Having said that, uh, if you don't vote, 
don't bitch. You know, don't complain if you don't vote. Or get involved or run for office yourself. Uh, you know, there's Create countries worth voting for. Well, yes, there's but there's countries throughout the, in the world where people are dying for the right to vote, and it's something that we just take it for granted. And uh, it's like anything else. If you don't, if we don't use our democratic um, opportunities, uh, then we we run the the real risk of losing it. And uh, history is replete with with examples of that. Uh, people taking things for granted. Uh, I was born nine years to the day that uh, that Germany surrendered, uh, and it was pretty amazing. My childhood, I was just you know less than ten years removed from Hitler, which was is pretty amazing. I mean, and that's and. You know, uh, Ralph and I uh, have seen, and Cassandra is quite quite a bit younger. Uh, but you know, we grew up when uh, voting rights bill was passed, when when uh, when there were still uh, poll taxes and literacy uh, tests at the polls, and were uh, segregation. George Wallace. I mean. Uh, it's you know we li we live in very interesting times. We've seen a lot of changes uh, and, and many positive changes, but uh, but a lot of um, a lot of scary things going on as well. So um, you know, and, and the music is a way to, to get people's attention, to, to get points across. You know, not all of them are, are overtly political. A lot of the songs that we're doing are topical, situational, uh, talking about uh, you know the human condition. But it's to get people's attention and some of the the best art, and uh, you know, which music is included, uh, gets a message across in in many different ways. It's it's not always, uh, as I said, overtly and directly political. But uh, you can read into it what you want. I guess the the best songs are uh, I'll let you do that. So. Well, I will just say something a little bit different. Uh, I Please I do. went through. A pretty deep depression this winter. This this turn of events was unsurprising to me. I was very surprised that that was what we chose as a country, and it got really heavy and really scary. And I started remembering all of the books and the spiritual leaders and quantum physics and all of these other pieces that are at play on this planet. This one way of destruction and money and corruption is just a little bit of a thread. And all of us waking up because this was so extreme and so absurd and so obnoxious and annoying and just please go away and stop this. Um, not even just the one individual at the top, but the whole system not working. Mm -hmm. That it is time for us to wake up. The solutions are here. Permaculture, composting toilets, building small, all these ways that we can live on this planet happily, having less work for a nice amount of money that everyone can have work and we can go on and on. But there are so many hopeful things we're putting our energy into. And the spiritual teachers always say, serve others. So that's all we have to do. Quiet the mind, open the heart, and serve others. And if we all started to just, because we're broken open, because we're uncomfortable, because maybe we all of a sudden are going to be poor because they are robbing us <laughs> in the meantime, that, but we still have those things within our ability to make ourselves feel good, to be able to find basic food that's healthy and good for us, and that we work as a team and are changing this. Not just the young people, us! We have to do the work. We can't make them do all the work. That's crazy. We have to. Uh, everyone is what call to arms. Everyone is the chance for everybody to work together. Nobody gets to just ride this one out. It's too extreme. That's the beauty of it. You can't. You can't just be like, oh, whatever. This is just in your face. So, just want to add that. And quantum physics, science. This is kind of all a mirage anyway. You can look into that on your own. Um, there's no science that can actually say this is a hard thing. There's like all this magic that's afoot that we haven't been given or been learning about in school or been just involved in. Um, and that's starting to become more mainstream and more out there. Maybe you're, there's some quantum physics classes here that are actually um, talking about that. When I was in physics, I took engineering here. We talked about the one quantum mechanics piece that is the mind blow. We talked about it for one minute and then moved on. And that is when you try to measure something, it is uh, a, a light particle. It's either particle or a wave. It can't be both, but depending on how you measure it, it is both. So that's the that's like from the 50s and 60s. Of, Wait a second. This isn't everything isn't as it appears. So I just want to add that little bit that we have. 
should be having a lot of hope now. And if we don't have a lot of hope, then we surely are doomed. This should be the most exciting time to be living on this planet and really finding that within us so that we can make this place work for everybody. So it feels good. We wake up and we're excited because this place is Eden. This is the gentle arms of Eden. This planet is amazing. The birds aren't stressing out. Even the ones, maybe the last ones, I don't know, were they stressing out when they, <laughs> their friends all left? Maybe they were. But nature knows how to live here. Let us remember how to be on this amazing planet that we live on. So I'll stop preaching to you. I want to hear what you want to have to say. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Thank you, Cassandra. Yeah. You guys are making me cry. Yes. <laughs> In a good way. We're tears for a minute. Any, any, anybody got... Uh, Comments, questions, ideas, inspirations to share. Um, it, it can be across the board too. About yeah. music or uh, existence. Tune their history. <laughs> yeah. um, so you have this quote at the beginning: "History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme." And you've consistently spoken about history, and the songs that you've chosen have been very historical as well as political. Um, is folk political, or is it always political, or should it be? Um, should it be that? <laughs> Is, is, is what folk? Folk, yeah, because I'm assuming... I Not necessarily, like but, but folk usually has, has some uh, amount of uh, poverty and class struggle, class struggle involved. Um, I, I, can, I can hardly think of a song that doesn't, even when it's kidding around about it. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, it's, which makes it different than, than classical music, which was originally written for the, for the royalty and gentry <coughs> under contract, you know. Um, but no, but, but, but the people's struggle uh, uh, comes in, into folk music a lot because it, it's there, you know. And, and I used to be down on the uh, down on the blues when I was younger. I said, what is all this stuff with the blues? And then I realized the blues is, is addressing uh, the, the struggles and the hardships, but it's giving you a groove <laughs> and often a sense of humor to make your way through it, you know. Um, and Louis Armstrong said, uh, um, what is this folk music? He said, this is all folk music. Folks play it, mm -hmm. you know. So, there, and there is a tradition of uh, you know overt political uh, you know social commentary. I mean, Woody Guthrie, um, you know, was the inspiration for a lot of people that came after him uh, in that regard. But I mean, um, it's people's everyday struggles. Uh, but as far as political songs, I mean, the, a lot of the songs, you know, the Bob Dylan um, and. A lot of the writers in the '60s came from a tradition of, you know, Pete Seeger, Woody Guthrie, uh, a lot, and a lot of the blues singers. Uh, as Ralph said, it's yeah, it's not, it's not all, um, it's not all political, but it's you know, same about the human condition. But a lot of it is. There is a, a very strong tradition as well. The, the, the so-called protest songs. So. Um, I have a second part to my question. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, something you mentioned earlier was. You, you really appreciate organic songwriting, you really like how natural this kind of is. Um, and something that we've kind of started talking about in class a little bit is the commercialization of folk. Um, do you think that commercialization of folk music has an impact on messaging, on politi pol politization and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's an awesome question because people ask me, would you care if someone stole your song and, and made a bunch of money off of it? This is a really interesting question. But I think of my favorite artist who's Michael Franti and Spearhead. Mm -hmm. And they started out super rootsy and they were singing so, so ooh, just deep stuff. And the stuff now is really commercial. I think he was on a Pepsi commercial or something, which was really, to me, extreme for him. Um, is very sunny, you know, now. And it's awesome. It's positive and it's danceable. And I know where his heart is. You know, he walks around barefoot. He's like, he lives the life of, that he sings about. But it seems like it changed him. Um, just thinking of examples, are there some that didn't change? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, this music doesn't get picked up. No, I mean, it doesn't. You just don't see that big <clears throat> shift of it's too uh, poignant and it's, yeah. 
uh, and I think it's you know it's human nature. If, if there's a way to make money off of something, someone's going to do it. You know, I mean that's just that's just the way it is. Uh, and will it ch- will it change the? I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, there's always the, the the potential to get uh, you know the the purity uh, contaminated. But uh, um, fortunately, there's a lot of people out there that uh, that don't seem to be affected by the lure of the, the buck, but there's there's plenty that, that do. But uh, but I think you know folk music is uh, it's it's message aside. I mean, a lot of it is you know I just I like the textures of it. I, there's I it appeals to me on many many levels, and not just uh, you know what it has to say. I mean, just music is for me just uh, something that I've always gravitated to, instrumentally or vocal music or or whatever. I think there's there's room for many uh, to uh, its appeal can uh, uh, is there on many levels yeah. you had something that I wanted? just want I think that seems like a very big I, I think what you say makes a lot of sense because if this is um, folk music music of the folk the people then, then they're writing what is concerning to them yeah things that are like foremost in their minds and music is so expressive, you know, joys, triumphs, struggles, and, um, you know, along comes something like the, the Brill Building, which is basically, you're, you're putting music out on mm-hmm. what amounts to an assembly line in a factory, and yeah. it's it's co- commercialized to be sold. It's a commodity. It's I mean, when you're writing a song according to the formula, you know, with your first climax and your second climax, and, you know, fit in a three minute and 50 second, you know, thing so that it'll go in between some commercials for car washes and stuff like that, it seems like there's going to be a different message in that, that, mm-hmm. that music. Yeah. yeah. It was so there's different good. concerns at the, at the base of yeah. what's going into it from the beginning. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, um, there's... Boy, I mean, this could be a, a several-hour discussion, but uh, <laughs> but I know someone who is writing writing music in Nashville, uh, and was told that they didn't want uh, the industry down there didn't want the the music to be too original, too creative, because uh, it's it was designed for uh, their audience were people that were driving to and from work, and they didn't want to have anything that was just uh, that. Right. And, and more than just pablum it's and uh, it seems that these yeah. music is being written for different purposes absolutely absolutely and and I enjoy co- really commercial music too I mean not all of it but uh, but a lot of it I you know I mean I grew up with rock and roll and the Beatles and I loved all of that and you know uh, as I said the appeal is is many and varied but uh, yeah, and I enjoy different musics for different reasons but, you know, whether or not the groove or, or the message or the melody or whatever, whatever it may be. But uh, I think of uh, Steve Martin. Someone asked him, um, will success spoil you? And he said, no, I've always been an asshole. And uh, I don't know. I just thought I'd say that. I wanted to share that with everybody. Well, so. well uh, yeah, and, and the, and the, um, the counselor. <coughs> You can make tens of dollars as a musician. <laughs> yes, over yes. A career, right? That's right. Yeah. There are hundreds yeah, of dollars right. over a career. Oh, over a career. You can make yeah. hundreds of dollars as a musician. And I, I think that I have entertained probably literally dozens of people over, over the years. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> the, the thing is that the Maybe. music impulse is so strong, and some people just really feel it and need to express. When um, the, um, the anti... American um, uh, hearings, when, when these hearings were going on, the House of Un-American Activities, uh, they brought in Pete Seeger, who's written a lot of great songs, um, and has just always been a people's poet. Uh, um, when, they, uh, asked, <clears throat> when they asked him, he appeared at these hearings, and he refused to give names of people who who were communists or associated with communists, they said to him, well, have you ever played music for communists? And he says, I'll play music for anybody. <laughs> and so 
I, I think that's a lot at the core of it, you know? Um, and also with our ability to write, to create our own albums, like I self-publish all three of my albums, and, um, and people who are really at the top and are starting to put forward some thoughtful lyrics that are, uh, kind of speak about stuff. So I think that these, this is changing because the public wants that and is supporting that, um, which is exciting because you do see, I mean, Nako and the Medicine People is a band, a, a current band that's just all conscious lyrics. They're touring the whole world. They have a huge following. Uh, it's not on the radio yet, mainstream radio, but it's kind of in that middle place. So I think that we can ask for it. And it's just, I think that has opportunity to change. But we definitely have seen one kind of music make it to the top <laughs> pretty consistently. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have a question for Cassandra. Um, how much? Of, so your like song beat yourself has like music, what you said like uh, multiple different stories, and I was just kind of curious as a songwriter, how much of it uh, is um, like putting someone else's story so it can be heard, or versus like you know putting out kind of like your own story and like your own kind of take on it. No, that's a nice question. Um, I could do both. I get really inspired by the stuff I just hear about or learn about, so I'm often writing about other people's experiences or stories. Um, I just learned about this whole new technique that for uh, farming animals that could actually help preserve or stop desertification, and I'm just like, how can I put that in a song? So I instantly, because <laughs> I feel like music is an education tool or can be, but I also um, always put it through my lens so it's always how I feel you know it's like here's a story but this is how I feel about it or how I can express it best and I've never been able to do covers very well so I'm glad you didn't ask me to do Guy Clark because I I just can't sing other people's songs with the same heart and passion that I sing my own and I try so hard and I really want to do that because it's so great to share other people's music because there's so much music um, but because it's so personal uh, so yeah it's a mixture of both of those but definitely everything goes through me and so has me attached to it. Thanks for asking that. Um, have you faced any conflict because of like your song selection or the songs you've written? I've had people leave shows. Really? Yeah. I was singing I Am From This Land at, in Coos Bay and, it, it, and, <laughs> and it, they said, they walked in they heard a little bit of I hate country music and walked out. So I remember that to this day because there was only a few people in there anyway. Um, I've had a few people walk out, and I um, the "Be Yourself" song, the line about um, the man wearing a dress, has really made people upset. But that's fine. It's an upsetting thing for some people. I have people walk out literally after that song, wow. and other people come up and are like, "How can I get that song?" So it's just the whole spectrum of people. I, I don't play that. Years ago, I played the bars, uh, and uh, don't do that anymore. I haven't done that for a long time. But uh, there's some some things that just you you just don't want to play in a in a bar, you know. It it just doesn't go over. Um, they they need they need more than a groove. They, uh, I think they they need a they need a throb. Doesn't matter what lyrics you're singing. It just needs to be what what a, what a friend is called. It's not just a groove. It's a throb in the bars. So I don't know. Kind of easy. I, I still play bars. Uh, I there there. Uh, I used to play in country bands that did the the anim, We call it the Animal Lodge circuit. The Elks and the Eagles and the Moose and the <laughs> as well as the VFW and the Legion Halls. I did that for many many years. Uh, I played. Electric guitar. But those uh, aren't really bars, although. Uh, well, it, well, I. So, there are things. It, the music they were surprisingly open to a variety of music. Uh, you know, some rock and roll as well as, but mostly country. But uh, but I did not um, talk about my environmental views. Yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. uh, playing out at Sweet Home. I didn't uh, you know talk about the the spotted owl. Uh, there you know I. I I, you know, don't drive the gigs with uh, bumper stickers on my car that's, you know, going to result in smashed windows or uh, punctured tires. I mean, there is certain, you know, discretion sometimes is the better part of valor. Uh, you know, uh, but not so much the material, but just, you know, I just, uh, I've learned to keep my politics to myself in some areas where I'm playing. Uh, other places it's safe. So, you know, just... 
other people have different opinions about that, but uh, you know, as a, for many years as a, a serious part-time professional, I mean, you, you do what you have to do, but it's not, and I like, you know, as I said, I like all kinds of music, and I have performed all, many, many different types of music, uh, but yeah, the overtly political ones I uh, have not done in certain places. Speaking of music, we should probably, we've got four more songs. Okay, we've got a few more songs. Menu. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, All right. Is there any last burning question, though, that you didn't get to here. say? What's that? Do you want um, <clears throat> your biggest inspiration in single music that you emulate or style or something about it from each of you? Could, could you repeat that last question? Last um, question. Biggest musical influence of a person or a band? Or a person's style, or oh. something that you choose to emulate. I you notice know, so you kind of, kind of have a Dylanish sound about your voice a little bit, and then thought about it for a bit, but it might not. Uh, it could be. Uh, I don't know. Um, gosh, influences. Um, my goodness. Um, bluegrass music, swing music, rock and roll. The singer-songwriters from the '60s through the '80s. And some of the newer ones, Michael Franti's great. I mentioned Alicia Keys and, and he, hearing Cassandra and you know, they, it's beautiful stuff. Um, Dave Carter, uh, look up Dave Carter and Tracy Grammer. He wrote a song called When I Go, which uh, he, he won down at uh, the Kerrville Folk Festival, which is the mecca for folk singers. Um, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, a lot of it is just... Uh, uh, I, I get pretty eclectic. You'll, you'll hear it on the next song I do. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Petit, what, how about you? Influences? Oh gosh. Uh, Muddy Waters, Bill Monroe, Ralph Stanley, George Jones, uh, yeah. Merle Haggard, Bob Dylan, uh, Woody Guthrie, <laughs> Pete Seeger, Charlie Christian, Django Reinhardt, uh, you know, I'm just... Yeah. Here, Beethoven, here. Brahms. Uh, gosh, yeah, True. It's just uh, listen to it all. I mean, this uh, don't limit don't limit yourself to one type of music. Listen to it all. I mean, there's uh, uh, Ornette Coleman. Uh, you know, just the, it's we have we live in such a wonderful times in that there's so much great music that's accessible. That uh, that I mean, there's yeah, I, I love it all. Who has a good list? I would say just some tops are Woody Guthrie and Pete Seeger. Um, reggae music, I love Bob Marley um, and many reggae artists. Uh, uh, Michael Franti has always been a hero of mine. Uh, Nago right now is such a hero. I know what he's doing out there. Uh, Alice DiMasselli, he's a Northwest singer songwriter who's been doing it for 30 years and it's all really wonderful. Should we do some songs then? Yeah. Uh, this Thank we only you. have what 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Well, 15 you minutes. Kick yeah. one off here. And they're uh, they're going to start on the leaking list. out the door, whether they want to. Or okay, okay. Well, let's. Uh, I'll do a quick. Uh, here's Thank a song. Steve Earle, uh, oh. great, great songwriter. Uh, was a country. Actually, had a brief country career as uh, got radio play and didn't go over. Didn't last very long in Nashville. It could have the drug use. And arrests uh, and the uh, six marriages may have had something to do with it. I don't know. Uh, you know, he could run for president. He could be qualified for that. But this is a song that he wrote as a young man uh, called the Mercenary Song. And uh, to me, I've always been intrigued by the the idea of mercenaries, people that uh, fight for money. I mean, I, I would argue that being a mercenary that could be like the the world's second oldest profession. I don't know. Uh, um, Here's what, but anyway, this is one that, uh, and he, he writes it as though from the standpoint of the, the, the soldier fortune, the mercenary, and as though it's no big deal. And to me, that's, I mean, and, and Steve Earle is very political in his songs, in many of his songs. So uh, there's, uh, there's some irony and, uh, in, in this song. Uh, Mexico. We're bound for the 
Durango to join Pancho Villa Hear tell that he's paying him gold I guess a man's gotta do what he's best at Ain't found nothing better so far Men called mercenaries and men with no country Just soldiers in search of war Well, we're bound for the border we're a soldiers of fortune, we'll fight for no country, but we'll die for good pay. Under the flag of that greenback dollar or the peso down Mexico way. When this war is over, might go back to Georgia and settle down quiet somewhere Well I'm most likely back up and head south for Chile here till there's some trouble down there Well we're bound for the border We're soldiers of fortune We'll fight for no country But we'll die for the day Under the flag of that greenback dollar Or the peso down Mexico Well, this song got written right after I did a little work with me, actually. Um, just a smidge, we were at, we were at the EPA doing a practice protest for the. Uh, which pipeline? Keystone Pipeline, that if it was going to go through, we were going to actually do a protest, but Corvallis is so sweet and generous that we did practice one where we invited the police and we talked about what we'd do and we planned it all out and they asked me to come play music so we'd have some protest songs and we realized there aren't any new protest songs. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so I have a few that worked and we definitely played music that day. Mina took these beautiful pictures, one of which I use uh, yes. frequently. It's beautiful, it's on my website. This song came out of that day. It's, it has a little chant in it that we did at a, at a rally. But the song is just in homage and appreciation for all of the people who have who have been on the front line all over the world, especially just recently. It's amazing the courage that it takes at Standing Rock in Tiananmen Square and I mean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and just to to go out and, and stand up for what's right um, and have the courage to do it. So the song's called Future As I See It.
to do this lap yeah yeah let's we finish with the yeah. sing-along please okay. yeah let's do it. but tell me uh where you're you've got a gig friday night i've got a gig friday night my wife who plays cello is coming to join me and a great young fiddle player kevin craven is joining me at imagine coffee oh. friday night and uh, they, they they heard Craven, uh, they heard Kevin when he came in with the oh okay the, yeah the he Beth he make jams he improvises he lifts he lifts me and I hope to lift him. And I had a show on Saturday. I sing back up in a, in a Bob Marley tribute band called Belly Full of Bob. It's a local band. It's really good. If you like reggae music, it's just a really fun group. And we will be out at the Da Vinci Days Festival at oh. the fairgrounds Saturday night, 7.30. It's outside. Kids are welcome. If you have children, it's really lovely. It'll be a really fun show. Great. Great. Lift your spirits. You're, you're yeah. playing some, you play Imagine, too. Yes, and actually this Saturday, if you're not <laughs> hearing Cassandra, and uh, please do, if, but if for any reason you're over in Lynn County, we're um, in a bluegrass trio. I play banjo and mandolin with a group called the Bush Pilots, oh. and we're playing at the Lynn County Fair. Uh, I don't say we're opening for um, uh, Winona Judd, but we are preceding her. You know, really? <laughs> opening for her doesn't sound. That, I mean, that's that's not. You know, we're just we're just happen to be playing before she gets on stage. Awesome. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. I don't know. You, you can make tens of dollars that way. Yeah, literally tens of dollars. So, uh, and then I'm playing at uh, Imagine uh, Coffee on uh, the 29th. I play the, the last Friday of every month. Yeah. Or, 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 excuse me, the last Saturday of every month. Thank you. So. Yeah, so anyway, here's a sing along. Uh, everyone you gonna go probably know this is. D or G? I could oh, let's go G. G? G, yeah, that's one of the people's keys. Right? And, uh, people's key. Yeah. Oh. I should probably just put it in. All right. 
Can you please well, this is one I'm up. sure everyone knows. There's no excuse for <laughs> not singing along with this. Uh, Unless you're from Japan or China. Uh, there you she go. You may not know it yet. Fair enough. Well, that's that's fair enough. That's 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 true. <laughs> I, but you'll soon know it. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. If you're standing, I guess maybe I should. I right? just gotta yeah, stand. Yeah. Okay. So uh, how do we rotate the verses? Let's all sing them together. Okay, so we'll start out with the chorus. This land is your land, this land is my land. From California to the York Island, to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. As I was In the shadow of the table, by the really far I'd see my people as they stood hungry, I stood there asking, Oh, is this land made for you and me? This land is your land, this land is my land, in California, in New York Island, from the river forest to the Gulf Street waters. Yeah, 
this man was made you and me. Don't you forget it. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.